Thanks more for coming and it's going to be a presentation and then feel free um, question and answers and we'll all be available. So thank you very much everybody. Thank you. Ian. Thank you. It's been a while since I've uh, been in front of the lights like this. Um, hey, some of you were involved in stage one so it's great to see some familiar faces. Um, I, one of our consultants said to me the other day, this Project Monger is the best project in New Zealand right now. And I, he's absolutely right. And I, I'm very proud and happy to be involved with the DHB again. And I'm looking forward to working with you and with Lee's Construction and RCP, Becca, uh, local planners and engineers as well. So th this is going to be a, a landmark project uh, for New Zealand, not just for Taranaki. Uh, we're, we're planning to build the first Green Star 5 hospital building in New Zealand and, and also the, the renal project, which is quite a small uh, thousand square metre building, is going to be uh, a, a zero energy building. So we, we are setting some benchmarks uh, in doing so. Now let me... Um, so. So that's, that's the base hospital campus. Is that a pointer, Sam? No. Okay, so the, the pale blue uh, coloured building in the middle is the new East Wing. Directly behind that is the stage one building which was built from, uh, what, 2010, 2011, 2013 it opened. Um, at the back, um, Towards the trees is the energy centre. That that and the renal building down below in the purple, rep, they, those projects represent what we call the seismic risk management plan. Uh, when I when I started in uh, 2016, um, I was aware that the New Plymouth District Council did some geotech on on the land in New Plymouth, and the soil category changed from a C to a D, and we we had to redo. Uh, all of the seismic assessments of the building and, and uh, not surprisingly the seismic performance of some of our major clinical buildings uh, dropped uh, into that earthquake prone category. The, the, um, the building that the ED is located in and the building the ICU is in and the renal department and that's actually driven a lot of the, um, the the drive, the case for this business case to proceed in, uh, in, with some urgency. We're, we're going to demolish a few buildings, the renal building. Once we build that new renal department, we can demolish that building. Uh, got a great team. Uh, some, of, some of those uh, companies were on stage one. Um, RCP, uh, project managers, they've now got an office in New Plymouth. Uh, NGO are working with homes, consulting NGO are the geotech engineers and homes are doing structure and civil. RLB, Ryder Levitt Bucknell, are our quantity surveyors. Becca uh, are doing multiple um, engineering elements um, from building services, ICT, environmental sustainable design and resource consent planning. Uh, Warren and Marnie are our, our architects and health planners. Um, Norman Disney Young are, are uh, on for fire, lifts and acoustics. Not last but not least, Lee's Construction have been appointed on an ECI basis and, uh, and that gives them the status as the preferred contractor for all of those um, projects, the new East Wing, the renal building and the energy centre, uh, and and the, the demolition of uh, 105. So we're, we're we're really when you look at I was sitting around the table in Christchurch with um, 10 engineers and five builders and half a dozen architects, and I was, we were going getting into the real detail of of this project, and it occurred to me you you'd be nuts not to build a, a hospital with an ECI process because we're, the devil's in the detail 
and we need to make sure that what we're designing can be built and use the, um, the builders' expertise and their uh, wider network with the subcontractors, you people, uh, to, to make sure that what we're designing is, is um, the best value for money and, the, and buildable. Um, that's the team. I've got to point it towards Sam. This is the renal building. Um, we, George Thomas, our CFO, must have had a premonition and, and bought some properties in, um, in David Street uh, a, couple, a, a year or so ago. And uh, it was, turned out to be a perfect location for um, the renal, new renal facility. The existing uh, renal facility is at 10% building uh, standard. We're building a, a, a modern, purpose-built, designed new renal facility. This is where you come for, re for renal dialysis. It's in a bit of a valley. Um, we've got two nice wings, a, a, um, a hemodialysis wing and a, a training wing. Um, this is um, targeting the zero energy uh, standard and primarily a timber structure. There's the floor plan. The upper uh, rectangle is the, is the uh, dialysis wing and the, the lower rectangle is the training and outpatient wing with a, a central access off David Street. And the beauty of this project is that it's um, taking a, a service like that out of the hospital and putting it into the community, but still uh, adjacent to the hospital. Uh, oh. The energy centre is um, one, of the, one of the things that we need to do is invest in the infrastructure of the hospital campus. Um, we've got a, uh, when we did the seismic assessment of the buildings, we, we also found that our infrastructure had some issues. Uh, and that's been well publicised uh, nationally, and uh, Taranaki is, was um, no different. We're, we're lucky we've got this cab off the rank and we can get stuck into it. So we're building a new energy centre. Um, Beckers have gone mad on this. Um, it's got three generator halls and a fourth generator hall for the future. Um, it's got a fantastic computer room, all IL-4. Uh, and we're, we're trying to decarbonise the campus. We're, we're going for high efficiency uh, electric heat pumps and, and getting on to that renewable energy. Um, in addition, um, as a result of the COVID pandemic, We've reviewed our oxygen supply on the campus and we're, we're, we're putting in two new oxygen tanks, uh, which will uh, more than double, actually, our current capacity on the campus in preparation uh, for possibly an, another epidemic in, in the future. Whoops. Uh, I told Warren and Marnie that, that we're not going for an award for this building. Uh, so with, they've got a little bit upset with me. We've cut back some frills. But uh, we will get awards for the other two buildings, OK? Uh, and they, they, they're still not happy with me about that. Um, but that is a functional back-of-house service uh, facility. Um, that's one of the oxygen tanks. They're actually not brown, they're white. Um, very functional area. And this is going to be a video. Sam, are you going to push play or do I? Good. So this is the white building on the right is the existing uh, stage one building. The, the terracotta colour on the, on the left is the new stage two building. So where, where the mobility garden is, that's the uh, junction between those two buildings. So we're flying over. Um, the stage one building looking at the helipad on the roof of the new building. It's another insight we've had is you would not build a new hospital in New Zealand without a helipad on the roof. And by the way, we've, 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 we've got a fundraising campaign to go on for that, so feel free to help. Um, 
the campus, you can see the, the stage two building is, is it's actually 21,000 square metres. The stage one building was 14,000 square metres. So it's a big building. It's got a big footprint on the ground floor with radiology and, and a, another big footprint for emergency department and acute assessment unit. That's the um, ambulance uh, entrance down the bottom there. Um, nice view of the helicopter. And this is going through the, the levels. We've got two ground levels, level zero, uh, where we've got a new entrance. Uh, and that will become a, a beautiful atrium. We're working with the uh, Taranaki iwi to develop some art in that, in there, in that space. It's going to be pretty special. And it's, it's been designed to connect to stage three. Don't forget, stage three is coming as well. Um, there's public facilities on that ground, on that base level, and, and our main radiology department, which is currently in the, um, the clinical services building. Where, where, where that, this is a viewing room for the deceased, the Tupapaku, uh, and, and a lot of plant room. Uh, and in part of the green staff philosophy is we're trying to encourage our staff to get out of their cars and bike to work. The next level is the emergency department. There's a lot going on here. There's a CT right next to ED, which is going to be fantastic for efficient patient care, uh, acute assessment unit, and an operation centre. That's the, the walking wounded, we call them, and then the ambulance entry beside the triage area. Going up to level two, I've got to talk really quick for this level because there's a lot on it. Primary birthing unit, four birthing rooms. Secondary birthing unit, four birthing rooms. Assessment unit, which is like a prenatal assessment. Postnatal inpatient bedrooms. An antenatal clinic and a neonatal unit. And that's all coming out of um, the existing maternity building into a, a beautiful brand new building. Level three is a new intensive care. That's a combination of coronary care and, and ICU. And there's a future ward in there. Um, uh, level four is the ICU, sorry, the lab and the plant. Uh, there's the medical lab there. Um, on the roof, there's more plant room. Uh, and then on level five, we've got more outdoor plant. And on the top, we've got the, um, the helipad and the patient holding on the roof. So that's gonna give us direct vertical access from the helipad down to ED, across a little bridge uh, into um, the theatres, if that's the case. So this is really bringing all of the acute services at the base hospital into two buildings uh, at, at aisle three. Um, what have we got here? Oh, this is the, the, the structure. This is um, a base isolated building. As a result of the, the Canterbury earthquakes and the change in the geotech of the, of the city, uh, we made an early decision to, for this building to be a base isolated building with a a steel structure above. Those are the um, isolation stands on, in the sub-basement. Um, it's showing we've got, we've got quite a big dig to do. How many, is it 30,000 cubic metres? 40. 40,000 cubic metres. So that's, that's going to take, um, with, along with the civil works and the um, the substructure a year. And we want to start that before Christmas, if we can, maybe January, if I can move the COVID people out of the ambulance station, we'll start it as soon as we can. That's our hospital campus. I just wanted to show you this because um, as, well as, as well as approach Tonga, we're also, the DHBs, uh, on the verge of starting planning for a radiotherapy bunker in New Plymouth. We think that will probably go where the um, laundry is in that building 127. Um, we're, we're expecting, well the funding for the machine's been announced, we just, we've just got to get a business case together and that, that 
will come on as well in the next couple of years. And in addition to that, we've got a mental health plan to improve the, the, the mental health facilities. The DHP started that a couple of years ago in the Eternal Iora in this building here, one, two, three. But it, we need to finish that. So we've got, um, we think we've got about $8 million total project value to develop those, um, finish the upgrade of those facilities, look at the alcohol and drug facilities in, in uh, this building, one from one year, and, and we're looking at a, um, a like a halfway house for, um, for, to help rehabilitation people. So there's, there's a lot happening on this campus, and, and I have, I think, I'd like to also show you where stage three is going to go. Uh, 104, which is the, the building where ED is today. Uh, once we've, the government's got over funding stage two, uh, I'd say in a, with another five years after opening stage two, we're, we'll be starting stage three. And that, oh, stage three is, um, is bringing all of the outpatient services from that campus. That campus is nearly a kilometre long and uh, 300 metres wide. And there's outpatients across the whole campus. It's very inefficient. And we can bring them all together in one building, uh, including paediatrics, surgical, orthopaedics, ophthalmology, the whole lot into one clinic. And that will finish the redevelopment of the Bates Hospital campus. I'd love to be part of that. <laughs> Is that it? That's it. So uh, I hope that's given you a, a quick uh, idea of what, what's in the scope. Um, I'd like to introduce Anthony Lees, who's going to help us uh, build that stuff. Yeah, Tenekaiwa Katoa. Thanks, Ian. Um, and can I just start by saying um, something that might seem really, really obvious and maybe a little bit silly, but you know, we're extraordinarily excited to be uh, part of this project. Um, as Ian said at the start, this is one of, if not the best uh, vertical construction project in New Zealand at the moment, you know, and we um, realised that from an early stage. One, the aspiration of the project, the, um, the sustainability features, you know, the fabulous asset that's going to be for Taranaki, but also the way in which the um, Taranaki District Health Board have gone about um, setting up this project really for success and, and um, putting a platform of partnership together for the way in which all of the parties are going to work. And, and uh, we're extraordinarily excited to be part of that and we're extraordinarily excited about extending that partnership approach um, through into the supply chain and those that we'll be engaging to, um, to work with us on it. So what I thought I'd, I'd do is just take up a couple of minutes. You're probably all saying, you know, who's Lee's construction? Um, so I'll give you a wee, little bit of an overview of, of who we are, where we've come from, uh, what we do, uh, and, and the way in which we work. And um, I'll try to be quick because I know I'm, um, I'm between you and a drink. So, um, so I set up Lee's Construction in 1992. So we've been, we've been trading for almost um, 30 years now. Um, and we've cautiously grown um, over that 30 years um, to, to be what we believe is one of the um, leading New Zealand-owned uh, commercial construction providers. And we have been very cautious and considerate about the way in which we've uh, grown to ensure that we don't stumble along the way. We've got a really proud track record of delivering large and complex projects for the New Zealand government. We primarily work for the government. We do do a bit of large corporate work, which you'll see on a, on a couple of slides. But I think at the moment, um, New Zealand government and Crown institutions make up uh, almost 80% of our workload up and down the country. Uh, we're a compassionate, real builder. Um, you know, we don't just um, organise subcontractors, we genuinely build. We employ tradesmen and tradeswomen. Um, we get our hands dirty uh, and we work in a, in a compassionate way. We, we genuinely care for those that work with us uh, and work, work for us. 
Um, but one of the really key things about us is that we're really selective of what we do. And, and to my earlier comments, um, you know, I wouldn't be quite as so bold as to say we, we sort of choose who we work for. We, we get uh, chosen, but we don't do an enormous amount of work. We are very selective of the projects that we go for, and our aspiration is to be doing a, a smaller number of, of larger projects, and, and those being uh, throughout New Zealand. So I wanted to also give you a little bit of reassurance that we understand um, working in regional New Zealand. Um, we're, we're, uh, we're not just a big builder from Auckland uh, or Christchurch. Um, we're currently working on projects uh, throughout the country, including Invercargill, Dunedin, Timaru, Christchurch, uh, Tongariro, Auckland, and uh, about to start a, a piece of work in Whangarei. Uh, and of course, we're, we're thrilled to add um, Taranaki to that uh, list. And the really key thing about the um, building in the regions is striking the right balance between the aspiration to be working with the local community, the local business community, as much as we possibly can on the projects, um, and, and getting the balance right with the resource that we also need to be bringing uh, into the community to, uh, to deliver what is a very large and complex piece of work, which I'm sure you appreciate from seeing Ian's presentation before. Um, so we've got a lot of good people who will be establishing and, and uh, living in Taranaki for, um, for the coming years as part of a project. Uh, Ian touched on our, our project director who's been working for us for many years, but uh, he is Australian. We won't hold that against him, um, but he's currently in Melbourne at the moment, so he might be a, a little bit of a late arrival, uh, hopefully not too late. Um, and there's a really big importance um, that we put on creating something beyond the project in the regions in which we work, uh, and in particular training. Um, you know, the, the outcomes that we can generate um, beyond just the, the building of uh, projects like, such as these is huge. Um, and in all of the other regions, and we'll be doing a lot of it here, is, is training people. We're going to have three or so years on site. We can put people through apprenticeships, our future leaders program, um, and, uh, and really create some great outcomes. And I'll just touch lightly, it's not quite regional New Zealand, um, but uh, to just evidence the fact that we can work in all sorts of places. We are the only business that New Zealand government's engaged to work for the Antarctic program. Uh, we've been building at Scott Base since 2004. We've built over 50% of the floor area of the, of the current base. Um, and we're currently being uh, selected as preferred contractor to uh, take that entire base away and, and build a brand new state-of-the-art base, which uh, is a, a long-run project which will happen over the next five to six years. So to give you a, a bit more of a, a granular feel of the type of work that we do, um, and very applicable to this project, a lot of it's in the healthcare sector. Um, Burwood Hospital, um, when we started Burwood Hospital in 2000 and 14, I think it was. It was then the largest project by dollar value in the history of the New Zealand Public Health Service. Um, it was a re really significant piece of work. Um, our project director, who, is, uh, who I was just talking about coming to um, direct the project, Maunga project, was our project director on, on this project. Um, delivered really well uh, and a fantastic um, asset for, um, for the Canterbury community. Uh, we are about three quarters of the way through building what has um, been labelled as the most sophisticated dental uh, educational facility in the Southern Hemisphere at the University of Otago. Um, a brand new building, a reconversion of the existing one, 211 new dental chairs um, and an incredibly complex building if you can imagine um, you know, health buildings are complex by their nature but when you try and put 211 dental chairs um, over three storeys of educational space, the amount of service that needs to go to each one of those dental chairs is, is quite extraordinary. Uh, we've recently handed over um, Mount Eden Prison New Building C, um, and this was uh, a pretty tough challenge. Um, building a multi-storey prison in a CBD environment um, during the sort of busiest building boom Auckland's ever seen, um, uh, inside, the light, uh, inside the wire uh, at Mount Eden, um, and our, our team did an extraordinary job um, of, uh, of delivering this project uh, in a really, really uh, challenging environment. And two more I'm just going to show you out of our broader portfolio. During the COVID lockdown, we completed um, uh, Building 4 for Fisher and Paykel Healthcare. Um, 
Fisher Park Healthcare are a fabulous um, uh, New Zealand success story. Um, they are also become a really important company on a global scale with, with COVID, uh, with the manufacture of uh, respiratory um, surgical equipment and the lights that they provide. Um, this is a 53,000 office research and manufacturing facility um, and as I said uh, we were due to um, finish it in April um, and um, the lockdown was obviously uh, put in place. We received, uh, uh, I'm being a little bit flippant with my comments, but a letter from the Prime Minister saying it's got to be done, um, it's got to be finished as fast as you can because they actually had a contingency plan that the negative pressurised rooms uh, in this facility could actually be used as overflow ward space if it was needed. Um, and lastly, Christchurch Outpatients, um, another really significant um, piece, of, piece of health work um, that we have uh, completed in, in recent years. So I just wanted to finish really on, on telling a little bit about our operating um, philosophies and the values of our business. Um, we work with a, and, and a lot of companies sort of say this, but we, we genuinely do mean it, we, we work with a really strong empathy for our clients and their project outcomes. Um, you know, we, we measure success by um, you know, clients wanting us back um, time and time again, and, and we've got plenty of stories like that. And we also measure that success of subcontractors and suppliers wanting to work with us over and over again because we, uh, we're, we're fair and, and good to work with. We operate, we make decisions on a long-term basis. We, we don't make decisions for, you know, what's the, the buck that we're making this week. We make decisions based on the fact that we want to be around for, um, for many years to come. We're non-confrontational and we genuinely mean that and I evidence it by, on both Burwood Hospital and Mount Eden Prison, we agreed the final accounts for those projects with um, Ministry of Corrections in the case of Mount Eden and the um, Department of Health, Ministry of Health for Burwood within two to three weeks of, of practical completion. And I think in the context of, of construction in New Zealand, that's, that's quite extraordinary. And in a, you know, beyond those two to three weeks um, of practical completion, to be able to agree accounts on hundreds of millions of dollars worth of construction work is the same with the supply chain. Um, and while it takes a little bit longer to agree all of the subcontract final accounts, we have a, a real, we put a huge effort in making sure that there's no long tail and where we can, avoiding difficult discussions. We've got absolutely no desire to be the biggest. So as much as I love standing here in front of you and telling you about these wonderful big projects that we've built, you know, we're not trying to build a, a huge company. We're trying to build an exceptionally good builder who does the tough work, who does the big challenging projects. Uh, so, um, so we're not going to all of a sudden blossom and grow and, and let things get out of control. We only take on what we are really confident that we know we can deliver well. And to, and to finish, um, we're, we're made up of a group of proud and passionate, highly capable people who, um, who work under this internal values, this um, logo you see on the screen there, the Lee's PPE is our internal um, our values logo. Uh, the old, everybody has to wear the PPE to work on a construction site, but to work for Lee's construction you've got to actually live and live your PPE and that is you, you, know, you need to turn up and be proud of what you're doing, you need to have a passion for what you're doing and, uh, and try to generate excellent outcomes. So um, that's who we are, um, that's how we work and a little bit of what we've done. Um, as I said at the start, we're enormously excited to, to be working with Ian and RCP uh, and the rest of the team um, for the District Health Board up here uh, and delivering what I'm sure is going to be an exceptional project. Thanks everyone.